So the key problem that evidence-based medicine ad addresses is the, the issue of trying to sift out the best evidence that's coming out through research and using it to improve our patient care, to change the way that we practice. And it's, there isn't one solution to this problem and we may invent new solutions during this workshop. This is a, a, an evolving science, if you like. So there isn't one magic answer to this. But the definition is evidence-based medicine is the integration of best research evidence with clinical expertise and patient values. And for us, two of those in motherhood, we wouldn't expect to do this without clinical expertise. We wouldn't expect to do it without involving the patient in the decision-making process in some way and, and finding out what their objectives are and what they want. And the magic ingredient that we'd like to add, the extra thing that EBM wants, is to add the best research evidence. And patients, if you tell them that we don't do that at the moment, are really surprised. You try and explain evidence-based medicine to patients and they go, you mean you aren't doing that already? <laughs> You mean you don't use the best research evidence when you make decisions about me? <laughs> and we go, well, that's almost impossible <laughs> on the other side of it. So EBM is the sort of trying to get those, the nexus between those three things. What I want to do is just talk about a couple of models of how this might look, the practicality. What would it look like if you were going to do this in practice? And I'm, beginna, I'm going to begin with the impossible version of it. So bear that in mind. This is the impossible version of it which is why I have the, um, the rings down the bottom here. I'm going to talk about the Olympic champions of evidence-based medicine. Dave Sackett was the founder of the Centre for Evidence-Based Medicine, and when he was here in the 1990s, he was um, an internal medicine physician working up at the John Radcliffe Hospital. And on the ward rounds, they used to take a thing called the evidence cart, which had a, a data projector and a laptop computer, and on the laptop they had Medline, the, the beginnings of the Cochrane Library, uh, best evidence, which was the, all the things from the ACP Journal Club, um, etc., and, and things that they'd previously appraised, and they're all set up on the laptop. And during the ward round, they would ask questions. Go, gee, I wonder if we should use X or Y. Should we give this patient with heart failure a beta blocker? What dose should we use, etc.? And they would look that up during the ward round. They'd look up two or three questions per patient. It took about 15 to 90 seconds, and I'll show you the data in a moment, to find the piece of evidence that they needed to answer that question, and it changed about one third of their decisions. So most, in most patients, they were actually making a, a, some decisional change, every patient that they were seeing. Okay, and you think, that's impossible, isn't it? Well, one fact is that the ward rounds took a little bit longer. <laughs> is Carl here? No, he's actually gone. Carl was a medical student during this, so he actually experienced some of these ward rounds. I, I hear rumours that the ward rounds could take anything up to five hours, Carl. Yeah, you couldn't actually fit all in one lift. There was that many people we had to come and put down clothes in two lifts. Yeah. yeah. So you may say this, this is not feasible and, <coughs> and not possible. So two caveats that I'll make about that. One is that most people do several hours of continuing medical education per week. When I've assessed this in workshops, most people on average are doing about three hours a week when you add up all the journal reading, the lectures that you go to, etc. If you put it all together, it's about three hours per week. What Sackett was doing was moving that three hours of continuing medical education and putting it, adding it into the ward round. So the ward round was lengthened because that's where he was going to put the continuing medical education where it was going to be most effective with individual patient care. They were learning on the fly, just-in-time learning, which is what I put up the top here. A sort of different approach to education. The other thing is being able to answer things that quickly. I don't even expect you to do that at the end of this workshop, right? Sackett had been doing this for 20 years by the time he got here and, and Sharon Strauss, and that's why I say these are the Olympic champions. At the end of this workshop, you might be able to find the best piece of evidence for something in maybe 15 minutes, but the first time can take an hour to do, and you get progressively faster at it. One thing you'll learn is that try finding no evidence, when there's no evidence there, it actually takes you longer, because <laughs> you're never sure, have I exhausted all possible search terms? So learning when to stop is actually a difficult thing as well. But it takes a while, lots of practice, hundreds of questions before you can get down to this sort of pace of being able to find the information, of realising where to search and what the search term should be. 
and then being able to appraise it rapidly as well. That just takes time and practice and I don't expect you to start.